This video will provide an overview on the operation and benefits of the electronic fuel injection system used on the Yamaha MX V series engines to help build a good foundation of troubleshooting skills. The sole purpose of the fuel system on an internal combustion engine is to meter and deliver the correct mixture of air and gasoline to the combustion chamber for the current engine operating conditions. One of the most common types of carburetors is the throttle valve type, which controls the flow of air into the engine with a pivoting throttle plate. Internal passageways and jets allow a preset amount of gasoline to enter the combustion chamber at different engine speeds. The amount of gas is controlled by the size of the jets and the difference in air pressure between inside and outside the engine. The engineer designing an engine with a carburetor must determine the best possible size jets long before the customer ever turns a key or pulls a start rope. In most cases, the engineer has no idea where their engine will be used, so the jetting must be a compromise to allow the engine to run in a very wide range of temperatures and elevations at the same time making sure the jetting is rich enough for the engine not to fail at the coldest anticipated air temperature or lowest altitude. The fuel injection system on the MXV engines consists of the following components. The engine control unit, or ECU, this is the brains of the operation, including a computer processor, permanent and temporary memory, and the programming instructions for how to operate the engine, the FI map. The single throttle body is connected to the cylinders with a Y manifold and controls how much air can flow into the engine, similar to a carburetor. A vacuum-operated low-pressure fuel pump keeps the float chamber in the electric high-pressure pump full. The high-pressure pump maintains a constant fuel pressure in the fuel lines between 37 to 41 psi. Each cylinder has a fuel injector, which is an electromechanical valve. When the ECU turns the injector on, the injector opens and the high-pressure fuel sprays into the intake track. A crankshaft position sensor, mounted close to the flywheel, produces AC voltage when the engine is running. The ECU monitors engine RPM and exact crankshaft position information from this AC waveform. A manifold absolute pressure sensor and intake air temperature sensor are contained in one housing and mounted to the Y intake manifold. The MAP sensor measures the air pressure in the intake track. The ECU calculates the air pressure from the DC voltage signal from the MAP sensor. The intake air temperature sensor measures the temperature of the air in the intake track, and the engine temperature sensor is mounted in the engine block between the cylinders. The ECU calculates air and engine temperature by the DC voltage signals from these sensors. The engineer decides the optimum air-fuel ratio for an engine at all engine speeds and loads, air temperature and altitude, and then makes a list of specific settings for the engine control unit to follow, basically drawing a fuel injection map for the ECU. Before the ECU can determine how much gasoline to inject, it must know how much air is going into the engine. Most automotive fuel injection systems measure the amount of air flowing into an engine with some type of mass airflow sensor. But virtually all fuel injection systems used on motorsports and multipurpose engines, including the Yamaha MXV engines, calculates intake air volume. The factory engineers spend many hours testing and verification of the airflow characteristics of an engine, from the intake, combustion chamber and piston design, all the way through the exhaust system. The engineer then creates formulas which take the voltage signals, mainly from the crankshaft position sensor and the air intake pressure sensor, and then factors in the throttle position sensor settings to determine very precisely how much air will flow into an engine at all throttle settings, making adjustments for elevation and air temperature. It's critical to remember that the FI system mapping is completed with the air filter and exhaust systems in new condition. There are no FI sensors that monitor the condition of the air filter or exhaust. When the ignition key is first turned on, the ECU will quickly take an atmospheric pressure reading from the map and air temperature, which allows the ECU to calculate the mass of air coming into the intake. And at this point, the ECU can calculate how much gasoline is needed to maintain the target air fuel ratio. The amount of gasoline is controlled by how long the ECU opens the injector. The longer the injector is energized, the more fuel is sprayed into the engine. The ECU constantly adjusts this time following the instructions in the FI map. At idle, the duration might be around three to four milliseconds, that's thousands of a second, and could increase to nine or 10 milliseconds when more air is coming into the engine under a heavy load. The fuel is pressurized at a constant pressure at all times, so the ECU only needs to control how long the injector is held open to hit the desired air fuel ratio. We refer to this as the base injector duration. The ECU will make adjustments to this base injector duration using signals from the engine and intake air temperature sensors and the O2 sensor. 
This will determine the final injection duration. The MXV fuel injection system features a closed loop system, which consists of a narrow band oxygen sensor in the exhaust and instructions in the FI map. Once the engine temperature is above approximately 150 degrees, the FI mapping tells the ECU to continually monitor the voltage output from the oxygen sensor and to adjust the fuel injector duration to keep the voltage in the proper range, around 0.7 to 0.8 volts. This is referred to as closed loop mode. The O2 sensor provides feedback to the ECU on the actual air fuel ratio. The information loop is closed. Now there are times when the FI mapping instructs the ECU to not adjust the fuel injector duration, basically ignore the O2 sensor voltage. For example, when there's a very heavy load suddenly applied to the engine and the governor opens the throttle very quickly and there's a surge of intake air. The ECU will inject a larger volume of gas in reaction to more air to make sure the engine is not too lean. This is referred to as open loop operation. We'll discuss a lot more about the closed loop system and the O2 sensor in the closed loop O2 sensor video. One important fact that mechanics must always keep in mind. If the voltage signal from the MAP, intake air temperature, engine temperature, and throttle position sensor is within the normal range of operation, about 0.6 to 4.8 volts DC, the ECU will use that input and follow the instructions in the FI MAP without question. There is no deviation from this MAP. The performance of the engine could be affected, and there may or may not be an error code indicated. The other videos in this series will go in-depth into repairing problems when the self-diagnostic system in the ECU sets an error code and troubleshooting failures and running performance problems when no error code is displayed. So please watch all the videos and refer back to them whenever needed. Thanks for watching.